Now, our first lesson from chapter 5 has to do with monomials. Monomial is a compound word, literally meaning one name. Mononomial, one name. And how we define that in math, math loosely, tomorrow we'll get a uh, better description. But for right now, this lesson, loosely, that would be one term is something where everything is being multiplied, divided, or there's powers, but there's no addition or subtraction. So we can have exponents, we can have multiplication, we can have division, we can have square roots, we can have all sorts of crazy stuff, except a plus sign or a minus sign, addition or subtraction. Those are the two things that we cannot have. Now we can have a negative, so I don't want you to think a negative number is not a monomial, but an addition or subtraction sign we cannot have. So looking at this list here, in our loose definition right now, which will be refined, our loose definition right now, the only one here that is not a monomial is the bottom one, 5 plus x because of the plus. All the others have no addition or subtraction. Right now we would consider them a monomial. Uh, in the next lesson we'll refine our definition somewhat and it will only include these top two and not any of the rest. Okay, so let's get to work. Now the first thing that we're doing is multiplying monomials. Here I have one monomial, n to the fifth, and another, n squared and they're being multiplied. Now, while there's a simple rule in order to do this multiplication that some of you may remember, I wanna go into the explanation why. The first monomial is n to the fifth, or it could be rewritten as n times itself five times. The second monomial is n squared, which could also be rewritten as n times itself, just twice. If I put these both side by side, n to the fifth times n squared, I get n times itself seven times. And so n to the fifth times n squared is n to the seventh. Now, the simple rule that some of you may remember is that if I have two things here that are being multiplied that have the same base, okay, if there's an exponent, that means there's a base. The base is the thing that contains the exponent. They have the same base, in this case, they both have n. All I do is I add the exponents when I'm multiplying. So five plus two is seven. So this is n to the seventh. You try that same shortcut on this problem. t to the ninth times t to the negative eight. The next thing we're going to go to is division of monomials. Here I have n to the fifth divided by n squared. So let's do that again. n to the fifth is n times itself five times. I'm going to divide that by n squared, which is n times itself twice. So I have five n's on the top. I have two n's on the bottom. And therefore, two of those n's are going to cancel. And all I'm going to be left with is n times itself three times. So my answer is n cubed. n times itself three times is n cubed. But there's a shortcut. As some of you may have already guessed, this is division where the base is the same, just like multiplication where the base is the same. Multiplication became addition. Division becomes subtraction. So this is 5 minus 2 is 3, so that is our answer. I want you to try it here with a little bit more complicated one. t to the ninth divided by t to the negative 8. Remember, when you're doing this, when you subtract the negative, you're really adding.
The one thing that might be confusing to some of you is an exponent that is negative. Some of you may think that this makes the number negative, but actually, on the contrary, it does not. Let's look at, take a look here. Let's use our rule that we had for division with the same base. Now, that this is x. What is the power on x when it's x just by itself? I hope you said 1. Well, now if we use the rule of subtraction, the top one minus the bottom one, 1 minus 5, I would get x to the negative 4. Well, that seems kind of odd. Well, let's see what it means. x to the fifth is x times itself five times. And x to the 1 is just 1x on the top. How many of those cancel? Well, hopefully you, you can see just 1 cancels. So all I'm left with now is one on the top, and how many x's on the bottom? Four. So in the same way, this is equal to one over x to the four. Now, if we take a look at this, the negative exponent only indicates that it's a fraction. These are equivalent statements. x to the negative four is the same as one over x to the positive four. Likewise, let's take a look here. t to the negative 2 is the same as 1 over t to the positive 2. 1 over s to the negative 5, now let's go the other way, is the same as s to the positive 5. Okay, I want you to try this one. Rewrite this one. It's a little trickier. Using only positive exponents. Do not have any negative exponents in your answer.